Greetings. Hi there. It's uh, Good Friday 2017 and I thought I'd record a quick little video and tell you the why of faith growth. Uh, and today is a good day to do that. Um, God is dead. Um, we are in, uh, in the church here. We're in that moment where we recognize that Christ went to the cross and was crucified and died. Um, and we're waiting a little bit nervous, um, but with a little bit of hope, um, and we're waiting for Sunday. We're waiting for the tomb to be empty. Um, so it's a, it's a good day to kind of um, to reflect on my why. Um, and my why is that empty tomb um, and sharing that story and the God that has forgiven us all. Um, and last night uh, at the Maundy Thursday service I attended, you know, our focus was on that absolution that, um, and my pastor and his, his sermon was so wonderful, was specifically about, it doesn't matter what you've done, you are forgiven. That's what's so awesome about this faith that is ours. And so why uh, faith growth and why do I do what I do? And it's significantly that communication has changed so much that in this day and age, people are going to go to Google with their great questions of faith. And they're going to say, hey, Google, if they have one of those little devices in their house or uh, their phone, or they're going to type, you know, does God love me? Is there really a God? Does the church care for me? Does the church want to reach out to me? I mean, I don't know exactly what their question is going to be, but I know that their faith journey in this day and age is going to start with Google. And so then my question to the church is, when they go to Google, are they going to find you? And so my why and why faith growth exists is we want you to be found when they go to Google and they begin their faith journey. Their faith journey. The church in and of itself and your particular congregation is probably in one of what I like to say four phases. And, then, and you know, and you may not be ready for the let's get found on Google stage yet. You might still be in like stage one, which stage one is totally, um, <laughs> hello, we don't have the password. We don't know how to get to our website. Um, and, you know, and then stage two is about building a digital platform that can inform your community. So it's still not an outreach platform. It's still kind of an internal platform. But you have to master, number two, you have to be able to master just communicating to your own people, the people that are already affiliated, the people that are members, and say, hey, we got a potluck on Sunday or our Easter worship times. You know, that, that special sunrise service is happening at 6.30 a.m. Praise the Lord, my church is not having one of those because I'm not an early riser. But, you know, just getting that basic information communicated to your community out through digital means. And so how does the website play a piece in that? I think the website becomes the core of, you think of a hub and spoke model, and then every other channel off of that. So when I say channel, I mean email, printed newsletter, social media comes out of the newsletter, but you have such a competence with your website that everybody knows it's authoritative, and it goes to the website first, and then after the website, it goes out to the other channels. And really, that's where most of our churches are today. And... We have to help you overcome that and help you become competent in that core communication so you can take it to the next level. And that next level is about starting to produce content specifically for those people going to Google. And I always say, first, it's by repurposing that content. So, you know, you preach a sermon every Sunday, Pastor. Wonderful. But if you're just throwing it on your website as a sermon, um, you know, Palm Sunday Sermon you know, to think last week, or Easter Sunday sermon, to think two days from now. Um, it's not a bad thing, but that's still categorizing it in that way for your internal, your already affiliated people, your members, and your regular visitors. Um, not saying don't do that, but then we, what we want to help work with you is, how can we take that and start thinking about the theme that you preached on that Sunday, and digitally putting it out there based on that theme so it starts answering questions. So the example I always like to use is, um, and I use this with permission, several years ago, about six years ago in my family, 
my sister had a stillbirth. And one of the things that I've always done in the history of our family is I turn to the great liturgies of our church as a way to help give solace, a way to direct my prayer life. And I turn to the Lutheran Book of Worship, which is of my tradition. Uh, I turn to the Book of Common Prayer uh, from the Episcopal and Anglican tradition. And I pull together from the prayers that were there a meaningful liturgy. Well, not even liturgy, just some prayers, honestly. And I compiled them, and I put it in a little book, and I gave it to my family. A year later, I published it on our website. Uh, and it is the number one on our website. That's faithgrowth.com. We're about websites <laughs> for churches. Um, and it's the number one post. And people get there because they search prayer for stillborn. There's a need, and they're looking for this. And all I did was collate from existing resources to share initially with my family and our personal time of loss and our personal time of seeking God and um, it met a need for other people when I put that out there. And so I didn't put it out there as just, ooh, prayer book or prayers from last Sunday. I put it out there specifically prayers for the stillborn. Um, and then I, you know, have an intro, talk about what happened in my family and you know, any day of the week that gets more hits on our website than any other type of information. So first, it's not about necessarily creating new information for those people that are going to Google and saying, does God exist? Where is God? You know, uh, and seeking that relationship uh, with faith. The first thing is that we're going to repurpose what you're doing week in and week out in such a way that it can be found by Google and other search engines. But first, got to get you a good website that meets your internal needs, that you have time to start saying, okay, what we're doing week in and week out here in the physical location, we can now um, basically publish this and then promote it in a way that can be found by people that are asking those questions of Google. That is what's going to make uh, churches so exciting, is that they understand that in this day and age, you know, I mean, yeah, there's social media, there's Facebook, there's all that, and, and important platforms. But it's that you really understand that when someone starts their journey today, they're most likely going to start with Google. And when they start with Google, are you going to be found? And when I'm saying start with Google, it's not just, hey, is there a church that has worship? You know, it's like, ooh, Easter worship times. They're doing that. And there's good statistics on that. But, you know, I mean... We've all known for years that there's people that just show up on Easter and Christmas. I'm talking about when they're searching for, does God love me? Or, honestly, one of another big search, does God hate me? It's a huge search on Google. And when they're asking such questions as that, are you going to be there, church, to provide an answer online? And I believe we have these answers, church. But are you going to be there? So that is my big why. I want to help you be there in those Google search results when they ask questions of faith. So on this Good Friday 2017, God is dead. We're living in this tension moment right now. Looking for hope waiting for those women to head to the tomb and discover it empty. We have a tension right now when it comes to digital. Do we want to master it? Do we want to use it? Because going forward, they're not going to come to our church and ask us questions first. They're going to go to Google and ask Google first. And are we going to be there? Anyways, that's my why. That's the why of faith growth. We want to help you be there. We want to help you share the resurrection. Anyways, uh, blessings. Um, peace to you uh, this Good Friday. Um, and as we head into... 
uh, Easter Vigil tomorrow. Blessings.